Our next caller is Chandler from California. Hey, what's up, oh, Chandler? Where are you at in Cali? Hey, guys. Uh, South Bay area. Oh, oh no, you're, you're close in our to neighborhood, us. right? Yeah. Right yeah. in our neighborhood. We're in San Jose. Yep. Yeah, close by. Good deal. What's your question? So you guys have talked a lot about like the you know maintenance stuff, physical things you can do to work out when gyms are opening and closing. But the question's more so, I guess, on uh, like a mental approach to dealing with you know, you get one month back in the gym, closes back down. I'm sure a lot of people like me are trying to spend that one to two month rebuilding, getting back some of the progress that they lost while everything's closed down. So kind of what advice do you have on the mental side of things? Like, how do you approach it? How do you think about that frustration of having to restart over and over? Mm, uh, so you couldn't find a speakeasy gym, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, one or two. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So no, that's that's a good question. Um, I I cannot imagine how frustrating that would be. That would really irritate the hell out of me if I was reliant on a gym uh, for my workouts and having to stop in between. This is when uh, discipline plays a big role. Okay. So discipline takes over when motivation and excitement uh, go away. So you're going to the gym. You're excited. They got equipment. You're having great workouts. Next mm -hmm. thing you know, Emperor Newsom says, Jim's <laughs> got to shut down. Yeah. So now you're at home and you don't have a lot of equipment and it's not as fun. This is when discipline takes over. I do want to ask you though, what do you, do you have anything at home? Do you have exercise equipment home? Yeah, I, I have a couple of kettlebells, uh, bands, pull-up bar. So pretty standard, uh, you know, it's enough to get by. Mm -hmm. What are your fitness goals? Well, before, you know, it, when the gym's open, it's usually strength focused, a little bit of powerlifting, but, you know, staying well rounded and just working on my numbers on the main lifts. Dude, have you ever done a pure kettlebell workout? Like just kettlebells? No, maybe half a kettlebell workout with, you know, uh, just replacing normal exercises using, using kettlebells, like doing rows, uh, holding them on my shoulders for squats, things like that. Yeah, you can get some phenomenal workouts with just uh, kettlebells. In fact, we have a very uh, not so well-known program that we made a long time ago, uh, Kettlebell for Aesthetics. Um, I'll have Doug send that over to you. It's all based cool. around uh, kettlebells. I have something to add back to the like the mental aspect, which is what you originally kind of asked for, right? We can sit here and talk about how to make a workout great out of the equipment you have, but I, I do understand the, the, the frustration on, and on the mental side, right? You just feel like you get some momentum and then kind of smacks you in the face and says, you no longer yeah. can you use this gym. So I want to address that because this reminds me of the the feeling that I had when I came off of testosterone and I went through kind of like this depression and, and I was not motivated to lift. And so I thought, okay, well, you know, I'm going to go play basketball. That'll, that'll keep me, you know, moving and active. And I love the sport so much. And then I tore my Achilles and I was just like, man, I can't win. Uh, and so I was down for a little bit and, and that what made me really reflect and realize that that's just one aspect of, of growth and health, right? So we, we tend to focus so much on the weight lifting part and the mm -hmm. nutrition part. And we talk so much of that because of course those are, those are big rocks and, and, and make a big difference in your overall health journey. But there's other aspects of that. You know, when you talk about mental health, spiritual health, relationship health with your, your spouse or your friends, um, and so I, I started to shift my mind in that direction uh, and started getting back into like reading a lot more. And so maybe look at other aspects of, of health that you that that nobody else can control, right? That nobody else can tell you you can't do and make that the, the primary focus during a weird, inconsistent time with the gym right now and really dive into that. And maybe that's nutrition for you because you're at home and you still can cook and do the things you want, or maybe that's reading, maybe that's walking with a partner, whatever it may be, or maybe that's meditating or starting to focus on mobility. Maybe you were like me where you neglected that for a long time and you know you need to do more of it and you're not. So find something within the, the health sphere that isn't something that Newsom can control that you can put your main focus on and just kind of shift that as your top priority and start to put a lot of energy towards that. That'll, I think that that shift will, will help the mental uh, aspect of how you feel discouraged when someone yeah. keeps shutting and opening the gyms every other week. It is very discouraging a lot of times, you know, cause these are uncontrollables and 
uh, you know, to be able to shift your mindset towards now what I can control and, and, and go through that, go through like what you can actually do and what, uh, you know, you tend to enjoy. And so for me, it's working out outside. So I want to focus more on opportunities for me to bring uh, my interest in, in health and fitness and bring that, you know, in an environment where I can still utilize it. And then what that looks like and start structuring it in a way where that matches with my lifestyle. But really, just yeah removing all of these uh things that can seem like it's it's imposing on you like uh, and just really kind of focusing on reframing it all towards the direction of uh you know where you want to take it personally yeah it's it's fitness is a tool use it uh for the context of what's happening right now and right now um you like justin said there's some uncontrollables mold your fitness around it change your focus like adam said i think that's a, that's a phenomenal advice and then discipline plays a big role now. Now uh, you're going to work out and you might have to just go and work out rather than being excited to work out. You're like, okay, I'm supposed to work out today. <clears throat> They're supposed to work out today. There's no gym. You know, I heard the guys talk about discipline. I'm just going to make myself work out and I'm going to mm. do what I can. And you know what ends up happening is that discipline then turns back into right. motivation. And also learn a new skill. I mean, it's a great opportunity. Like we and, and Sal had mentioned earlier, uh, you know, the kettlebell for aesthetics. But there's also like these skill sessions in there where we actually learn the technique and the proper technique to do uh, a kettlebell swing or a windmill or you Turkish know, get up, circus or- get up. Some of these more complicated moves that we just get so busy in our own routines all the time uh, that we don't spend that that quality time on really sharpening our skill. Yeah. One one last piece of advice, Chandler. This one's really important okay you ready yeah make sure you sign the recall for gavin newsom yes please <laughs> <laughs> hey thanks for asking a question right. uh, we we appreciate it thanks chandler yeah thank you, you guys thank you man appreciate it guys thanks man that has to be so common right now like how especially yeah. in california like how many people that we have that like are, have a serious goal dude it's so oh, it's depressing I, it's so frustrating because what we've seen in other countries they've actually done studies on this on other countries on the places with gyms gyms have a lower transmission rate uh for covid than almost anything else people don't work out when they don't feel good um so there's that self selection bias yeah. and then look at the the and again i'm not a doctor okay so i'm going to preface this by saying this but Look at the comorbidities that cause the severe symptoms. All of them are these chronic health issues, obesity, right. diabetes, yeah. you know, the, the, these blood clotting issues that COVID causes. Exercise. It's so therapeutic. It's so mentally liberating. Like we need an outlet like that and to take and remove that away from us, I feel is a disservice. But Absolutely. I also, you know, this is an opportunity too to shift your focus, yep. you know, and we, we talk a lot on the show about that. It's not just about the the weights, you know. It's not always got to. You can still be a very healthy. I, I am nowhere. I'm nowhere near close to the uh, you know iron strength that I was four four years ago. But as far as my overall health, when I talk about mobility, my relationship, like staying active, moving, that type of stuff, you know, reading all these other aspects mm-hmm. that that make me better in my whole health journey. A lot of those don't require the gym, yeah. and instead of letting the, somebody else, uh, you know, frustrate me because they're telling me I can or can't do something, I'm going to focus on the things I can control, and maybe an area that I know that I could be better at that I know mm-hmm. will serve me, and then I'm going to pour yeah. a lot of my energy there. There's always opportunity in hardships. That's very empowering.